Hello, and this is Dustin DeHusky for another video. And you know what? You guessed it. It's going to be about cars again. If you already thought that before you clicked this video, you and a cookie. It's just it's very hard to send it through the internet. So, how am I going to describe this subject today? Where did they all go? What do I mean by that? I'm talking about model nameplates that had multiple body styles, again, under one nameplate. Gone are those days where you can option out whatever type of car body style you want, whatever options you want, and it fits your lifestyle exactly the way you want it. But you get the style of the car you like. Nowadays, you just get one or two choices. And often enough, those choices are disappearing real fast. So what I mean by body styles, I'm talking about convertibles, coupes, hatchbacks, at least... I would say today hatchbacks are pretty healthy. Of course, you got your ubiquitous you ubiquitous sedan. I'm trying to use big words and uh, I keep failing. And station wagons, which aren't fully dead, but they're few and far in between. So both, so the you know convertibles are dead. Coupes are nearing death. Hatchbacks have gained a renaissance, so they're on their way up. Station wagons are still hanging on by threads, but they're still around, and they still have a small following that manufacturers will still continue to produce for the time being. And of course, the traditional sedan in America, that's a pretty popular body style that you can still count on, but it might be waning in face of new hatchback options. But most car models don't offer more than one body style. Sometimes they may offer a hatchback, but nothing more. Well, let's turn back time and just talk about different ideas implemented, which I've got examples, by one manufacturer in the 1980s and to show you how plentiful these body styles and their selection in one year alone. I guess let's take a look at that right now. All right, so we got 1980s GM shit boxes. So we're going to start off with the small one. All right. So you got Chevette. And then you got... You got a five-door hatchback. With... Apparently, it comes with an interior. And a three-door. All right. You got that? Good. So you got the smallest car in GM's lineup at this point... Doesn't come in a sedan, doesn't come in a station wagon, doesn't come with a convertible, but you still get three and five door option, because you know what? Why not? And these are popular. Uh, they made, what, close to four million of them? You can't find a single one in sight today. So what next? Oh, look at that. You got a Cavalier. And this actually might be the most extensive body style lineup that any GM car had at this point. That it came with a three-door hatchback, which I think a five-door hatchback should have been uh, offered too, but I don't think they were uh, thinking about that. I don't know why. So Cavalier had a hatchback... Came in a two-door sedan, or really a coupe, really, but 
these these were called two door sedans back in the day, but again, coupe and it's a Type Ten. Holy moly, a drop top! So you have a Cavalier convertible. Look at that options, which also came with an interior. Then. Of course, you've got the standard four-door sedan. And then lastly... Oh! Hatchback. Or, sorry, uh, station wagon. So, something as lowly as the Cavalier at this time had no less than five body styles. So this was very much GM's bread-and-butter vehicle. Then we're going up in the world. Now you got Celebrity. Now you don't get hatchbacks, but you get a four-door sedan. You also get an, you get an interior with steering wheel in this car with a two-door coupe, which looks really nice. These, these do look really nice. You just don't see them very often. And you get a station wagon, which I think was new. For 1984, because the uh, the rear-wheel drive Malibu was the stand was the standalone uh, mid-size station wagon, if I remember correctly, or that or in '83 the Celebrity wagon came out. So you had three different body styles for just mid-size offering for Celebrity. Then you get the Citation Two. Which, uh, you, you can't go to a GM dealership and then whisper X-Body and they're going to give you bad stares. And I've done this at Holt Chevrolet and they gave me weird looks. Five-door hatchback. Look at that. The only, like, large size car that they came in with a five-door hatch. Besides Chevette. And Chevette's a small car. And these do look great. It's just horrible build quality. Look at that, another five-door. Oh, my God, it came with an interior. And this one came with a two-door notchback, or just coupe. And the coupes, they came back, they left, they came back, and they left during um, the early 80s. Because sometimes they didn't offer a coupe in certain years. And I think one of them is going to be a... Yep, there it is. Three-door hatchback. So, you had so many options. You had so many options for body style, for any nameplate. And General Motors was really, really, really giving you a good assortment of fruit salad in the 1980s as far as body styles. Of course, you know, SUVs and minivans were either beginning to be new or was just over the horizon. So they had to make do with just ordinary passenger cars, all right? This is the golden age where you can get practically any body style you wanted for whatever car you wanted to buy. Nowadays, you just get four doors and a steering wheel and very rarely do you find a coupe sedans uh not sedans but station wagons you can still find but really uh, you very very few manufacturers make a station wagon in, anymore it, the volkswagen audi mercedes benz volvo they're really not that many and none of them are american in fact, uh, I don't know if there's any Japanese or Korean import that also makes a station wagon, so I really don't know. And convertibles are dead. So for the second time in automotive U.S. market history, the, uh, the convertible made a comeback and then died again due to poor sales. And that's after 
they just beef up the A pillars for rollover accidents. It's the whole reason why hardtops and convertibles died from the market was they had to make sure that in a rollover the roof will support the rest of the car and not crush everyone in it. And none of the cars at the time could. So I say today's selection for cars are kind of boring. Although I like my older uh I like my older shit boxes because there's something interesting to look at. Even something as lowly as a Chevette is kind of nice and nostalgic to a time period I never actually grew up in but saw a lot of them growing up. And a chrome bumper. Look at that. Actually, a lot of these cars had a chrome bumper. Actually, this one you could option with a chrome bumper. This one actually has a chrome bumper, like a legitimate actual bumper. And then the center of the uh, celebrity had just chrome bumper as well. Yeah, you could option one with a Cavalier. That's not unheard of. So I just thought I'd want to discuss body styles that have come and gone and no longer in, like, in the mode. So... I figure I'd probably just uh, entertain some of you with my sales brochures because uh, they're pretty to look at, but they make a good example that the selection we have these days is nothing compared to what our folks growing up in the 70s and 80s had. And it's kind of sad. You have more options for SUVs and CUVs and trucks. What happens if you don't want one of those? What happens if you don't want to spend all that money on gas? And yeah, you'll have as much space as you want in a Chevy Suburban, but you'll never use it more than once or twice a year. And after that, you don't know if you'll be able to use it all again. And most people tend to drive to work by themselves. Or tend to be dinks, dual income, no kids, and they're still being, they still buy big vehicles, but they never actually use up the whole interior volume of their vehicle. I don't know. Bigger vehicles to me are a huge waste, but that's just my own opinion. So, anyway, I thought maybe I'd share something that kind of came to mind. That. The 90s was a good cornucopia of all different kinds of models. But even in the 90s, the station wagon was kind of being chopped. And then by the early 2000s, convertibles kind of died on the wayside. And then 10 years after that, the coupe has kind of dwindled in sales and a lot of manufacturers stopped including them. And... Uh, Station wagon fully bowed to give way to minivans, which are still popular 20 years ago, and now the last 10 years, the SUV. So, really, for cars, if you're looking for a car, you can certainly find a five door hatchback. But the only other choice, the only standard choice you get is a sedan, and they're everywhere. So, yeah, there we go. So. Hope you enjoy this little short video of stuff that just kind of uh, enters the mind of Hoosk. So, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.